Morning everybody, my name is Jerry and this is week 14 of the weekly chat. Uh, it's also my last day in Medikwe. Uh, if you've been following along, you'll know it's been quite a ride and there's lots of stuff coming up. So, for today, a couple of things to chat about. I'm going to jump a bit, so keep up. Here we go. Um, moments, first of all. I mean, I came out this morning again here to Clodagh, you'll see behind me. This was one of the spots where we spent a lot of time when we were out in the park. And photography and life, at the risk of getting too deep, is all about moments. So, it's moments like this that makes it special, makes you remember. And I think that's the same with photography, where you have to try and create moments that that will stand the test of time if you will but special things whether it's to you that doesn't it, it doesn't matter to other people it's yours it's your moments and to bring the photography in just before we carry on one of the things we had in this week a couple of times actually was we were sitting in different sightings we had lions hyenas all kinds of interesting things and people pick up their cameras and they start firing away and then afterwards there's something wrong the setting was wrong high iso whatever the case is and uh, in the in, in uh, of the weekend, I was sitting around a campfire with a bunch of guys, and we we're taking pictures for a book that we're doing on the conservation weekend that we did. And one of the images I wanted was all the guys sitting around the fire. So you got the bright fire in the front, and then all the guys sitting around it in the back. Exposure nightmare. So in the dark there, I shot off a couple of frames, but then I wanted to start to change. I wanted to start changing settings. So. Try this, if you've got your camera close by, take your camera, close your eyes and start playing with settings. Try and change your ISO, try and change your autofocus, your what else, your white balance, shutter speed, all of these things. Do you know your camera well enough, all the buttons everywhere, that you can change even in the dark? Because a lot of the times, you're so busy, you don't want to have to take your camera down from what you were busy with, change the settings, look down, and by the time you look up, scene's gone. Right, know your camera. For me it was interesting because I've been shooting the last while with a D3S, a D700 and a D7000. Now, <clears throat> all of them have slightly different ways of doing things. Um, they said the buttons are slightly in different places. So when I was sitting around the fire with the D700, it was interesting that I struggled to find where my ISO button was. Yeah, it happens. But big thing, know your camera. So as an exercise, literally. Blindfold yourself, sit in the dark room, and see if you can change your settings, the important ones for you. Aperture, ISO, uh, what else? Focus points, metering, those things. Can you do it in the dark? Because then you won't miss the shots. And that's what's important. Um, anyway, back to back to Medikwe. Like I said, the sun's just coming up. I did shoot a bit of a video before and after, so we'll drop those in for you later on. Um, yeah, it's been about yo, five years or so that we've been in the park now, in Medikwe. Um, managing different lodges and things and I was speaking to Grant earlier this morning as we drove here it's interesting now that something like this has to come to an end because whoever you speak to always and they hear you work in a game reserve you have you must be on holiday full-time I mean you never work yeah we sit on the deck and watch lions all day and elephants drinking doesn't work like that um, I've heard from a couple of people that the only thing wrong with the hospitality industry is the guests it's a joke. All right, move on. But there's times where people come into this industry and you do it for the love of it. And I think what I've taken from this whole experience of being a Medikwe for five and a bit years is the passion people have for nature. And that is an amazing thing. Um, we did the conservation weekend thing last week where we put collars on two buffaloes and we notched four rhinos. Um, and then we did a bit of an auction thing to raise money for that as well. And not just the people coming into the Rater Reserves, but also people working from the ecologists down to the field guides, the staff at the lodges. It is, it is, it gives us hope, I think, if we know that there are people out there who care as much for things like this and hopefully keep it going for a little while longer. Because let's be, I mean, let's be realistic the, the rhino poaching thing, it's a complete disaster. I mean, the idiots who actually think they can use these things to cure cancer and for erectile problems doesn't work. Anyway, they're, they're massacring the rhinos, so having people out there and people like I've met the last couple of years in Madikwe, it's, it's an amazing thing. Um, it has been, it's definitely been an adventure for me and my wife, it's been an awesome, awesome thing to do. And I was saying to Grant this morning, if I had to leave the park and leave a piece of us behind here without knowing where I'm going to or having to start something fresh up, it would be scary as hell. Um, look, it's a difficult thing, it's sad as it is having to leave great friends, great moments, again it comes to moments, 
the amount of photographs I've taken in this park is just, I mean, I'm probably going to spend the rest of the six months, rest of this year, just working through those, which is nice, remembering. But, um, yeah, it's an amazing place. Look, there's some very, very strange characters. I'm going to not lie to you. Um, some questionable behavior at times, but it's all good fun. It's all good fun. So, Madikwa, always a special place for me. I am back, and we are going to be doing work through our new venture uh, in Madikwa. I'm back already on the 14th of August, so maybe then I'll do another short clip from there. We'll see how it goes. But, um, yeah, there's more. There, there's more out there because we get so entrenched in what you're doing, uh, whether it's photographically, in life, business, that your world literally becomes that big, and everything revolves around it. And I think that the, the scary thing moving out of that, and that comes back to inspiration and creativity and photography that we're going to get to now as well. But you're so scared to step out of that bubble that you never get there. So, um, yeah, anyway, time for me to step out the bubble. It's very sad leaving, but hell of an excited about what's coming up. You guys will know, I've been speaking about it for a while. So, I'm going to keep speaking for a little while longer. You just have to wait and see. But anyway, yeah, Medico, it's been real. Thanks to all the guys out there. But yeah, we'll be back. We're not disappearing for good, so that's a nice thing. Um, then, the last couple of days, look, the last couple of weeks have been crazy. It's been um, busy trying to move house and to do all kinds of interesting things to try and pack boxes and get a handover done for Grant and them who were taking over at the lodge where we were, that it felt to me like inspiration goes for a ball. I mean, I was going out and I was still seeing lions, nahinas and all these wonderful things, but the inspiration to create wasn't there. So, last week on the chat we did have a brief look at this. But yesterday I did a post where I, I, I looked at and I said that it's all fine and well looking for inspiration online. We all go onto Facebook. You go onto Twitter. You go onto outdoor photo galleries. You go all these different forums looking for inspiration. And it's all bite-sized pieces. Now... That would be the same. It's like photographic junk food online. It's little pieces. It's not good for you. The reason is, yes, it's nice to look and to get ideas. But everything's based on Tom Hadley, great wildlife photographer from the UK, commented on this specific post saying, you know, we're trying to create based on the top 10 ways to, or the top 10 lists of how to. So you're going to go out there looking to see, I want to get a shot, shot like Jerry, or I want to get a shot like Grant or Greg, or whoever you're looking at. Um, that stunts your creativity. Yes, you've been inspired to actually go out there. But if you do not take that inspiration further, you're not going anywhere. I mean, inspiration is based on ideas. It's based on thought patterns of what you want to do and, and creating things up in your head. Not even creating. Working on things in your head. Creating is the act of doing. So we need to stop at some point looking for inspiration and just go out there and start creating. It's difficult because if you don't have the inspiration to start with, why would you want to go out? But it works. Trust me, it works. Pick up your camera, get out there and start taking pictures. The more you do this, you're going to start switching on because you have all the background. You've looked at all the images. You've looked at my images online. You've done all these things. So go out there and just start taking the pictures. Inspiration will find you. It will come back. Um, David DeCherman as well, also, he, he, great photographer. I love, love his blog. Awesome stuff. I'll give you the link. Um, also speaks about grabbing your muse by the neck and saying, listen, we're going out now and this is going to work. So, tough one. Um, but inspiration for me the last while has been a bit flat. I went out, yesterday morning I went out and we had an amazing buffalo. We were in the middle of a whole herd of buffalo. And, you know, just pick up the camera, start shooting and things start happening. It starts switching on. you gotta, got to train it. Um, so, inspiration, tough one. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Check the blog post from yesterday. Very short, concise, point-wise, don't get do what everybody else does. Don't try and be like someone else. Do your own images. And life, and photography, do your own thing. It's not going to work otherwise. Um, the, the idea behind the move for me as well, where we're going now, is that I think if you stay in one place too long, or if you shoot the same thing too long, so let's look at the parallel again. I mean, life-wise, if you do stay in the same thing, you get into a, you get into a, 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 a comfort zone, Everything, you're not going to challenge yourself. Photographically, if you do the same thing all the time and you look at people's stuff online and you keep on doing the same things, you're not going anywhere. You're not going to grow as a photographer and that's why we do these things. Ah, sorry, thought there was lions roaring. But no, it's a plane. Mm. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so inspiration, tough one. I do think, however, there is a place online for us to go and look at people and share. 
you know, I'm big on sharing, but we need to start creating as well. And a lot of people get so stuck on the inspiration part that they never get there. Sad thing. Anyway, I think we're going to start wrapping this up. Next week, I'll see you guys from Joburg. I'm actually moving house later today, so yeah, sense of humor might be dwindling by about four o'clock this afternoon. So lots of interesting coming up. Um, I had a couple of meetings with my business partners uh, on two days ago, and um, there's, there's so much happening and things happening that, again, photography for me might take a bit of a backstage in the next two, three weeks until I'm back in Madikwe. However, I've got a lot of images to work through and there's still tutorials and the videos are going to keep coming and all of that. But um, I think with moving forward, the I'm going to leave you with one quote from Walt Disney, I think, said that it's kind of fun to do the impossible. So watch this space. Lots coming up. Big things coming up. Again, follow me on Twitter. Um, as I move back to the city now where the, there's more internet coverage and stuff, I'm going to be a lot more active on Twitter because it's on the go. Um, Facebook page is going to keep on growing and then it's going to evolve. Watch this space. And yeah, I'm going to keep on posting blogs in between. Video will be, like I said, from Joburg next week. Kind of fun to do the impossible. So get out there, create. Don't look for inspiration, only start creating. It's been real. I will see you next week. Enjoy.